Hey guys, DIY Maniac back here with you, John P. Uh, in this video, unfortunately, it's a repair video on my John Deere D105 suspected head gasket failure with only, let's see how many hours we have on it. It's going on five years old and it's got only 79 hours and I suspect it has a blown head gasket. Now, why do I think that? Here's the issues I'm getting. And it just started last week. Unfortunately, when my 12-year-old son was cutting the grass, so he felt bad, thought he did something, but he didn't. Uh, all of a sudden, it started uh, spewing out some white smoke. So it was definitely burning oil. Uh, let it cool down, pulled the plug, and sure enough, the plug was fouled, burnt oil. Um, so these engines, these Briggs and Stratton engines, so this one's the 17 and a half horsepower. Um, then you have the 19 horsepower, the 21 horsepower. Forget the other ones after that. Um, pretty common failure on these is the head gasket. Uh, so what happens is the gasket material in between the valve uh, galley and the cylinder head, um, the piston, uh, tends to break and that allows oil to be sucked through and burning. Uh, so yeah, I mean, burning oil could be definitely, you know, as I said, it could be the head gasket, like I explained, could also be uh, cylinder rings, valve guides. However, because of the hours on this engine, I'm not thinking it's wear, I'm thinking it's failure. And that's why I'm really thinking it's head gasket. Uh, regardless, whatever the, the, the repair that's gonna be, need to be done on it, whether it's uh, piston rings or valve guides, uh, head gasket, the head has to come off. So I'm not doing anything needlessly. I need, uh, you know, taking the head off to check that head gasket will need to be done anyways. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you guys how to go about um, taking off the head putting on a new gasket, putting everything back together, uh, looking for that failure point, and we'll we'll go from there. So I'm just gonna set up the phone on a tripod so we could go over the first step, which is removal of the hood of the John Deere tractor. Okay guys, so I got you set up. Uh, if you hear a fly buzzing around, I got a damn horse flying here that's driving me crazy. Uh, so if you hear any buzzing, that's him. So when we want to remove this hood, it's quite simple. Uh, there is a trick to it. First step, we want to remove the wiring harness for our headlights. So you go ahead, you'll find inside the hood a connection, plastic connection that has two little tabs that you press in on and pull apart that disconnects the headlight. Now, it's a plastic hinge, sort of like these two little pins that fit into holes on either side of the, of the frame. The way to get it out is you close the hood slightly on the left hand side so looking forward which is if you're in the seat you're going to grab right here on the body and you're going to twist inwards so you, you kind of see it it slides over and it releases so we'll do that again so you grab twist it slide it over and it'll lift up and that'll allow you then to slide it out of the other side and take the hood off and now your hood is off your tractor and that's the way the hood is removed so looking here you could see your headlight harness connection um, that's attached to the tractor and over here on your hood if you come and look inside you'll see the the other end of it right there and then you can take your hood and put it off to the side so what are the first steps we're going to need to do to remove this cylinder head? We want to think safety first. We want the, definitely the mower not to be running. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but in today's age, you never know. Uh, mower needs to be off. Mower needs to be cool. We don't want to have a hot engine. We're going to be working with the engine, the exhaust, the valve cover, the valves. If it's hot, you're going to burn yourself. Also, if the metal's hot and you're trying to take the bolts off, you can actually cause damage. Um, you could... De uh, cause the bolts to strip out, especially on the exhaust. So have a cool engine when you're gonna do this job. Make sure the key's in the off position and throw the key on a workbench. Don't leave it in there. I know it sounds silly, but like if you're like me and have kids around, it's not so much if you're working on it, they could start and hurt you. But whatever reason, you have the engine apart, the key's in, they walk over and they turn it and start spewing oil everywhere and cause damage to the engine. So let's be safe there. So the first part of this video, what we're gonna show um, is how to get the head cylinder off, right? So what we're gonna need to do first is remove this engine cover over here. So I'm gonna show you how that's done. So the first step to removing the engine cover is we gotta open up the air filter housing, 
which I'm sure by now most of you are already know how to do. If you're changing a head gasket, you got some hours on your machine and you by now, I hope, inspected, if not changed, your air filter. So it's just a quarter turn locks, boom, boom, and this comes off. And this allows you to see your air filter. The air filter itself is just held on um, onto the intake manifold, just with pressure. So you just basically pull it off and it comes right off. And you can see that's your air filter there. Mine's never been changed, believe it or not. Look how clean that is. I guess I'm lucky I don't live in high pollen or high dusty areas. Once the air filter itself is taken off, it now allows us access to one screw down there. It's either a quarter inch socket or a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver and we're gonna go ahead and take that off. So now you've gone ahead and removed that screw. There's gonna be four bolts you're gonna to need to remove. You're gonna get yourself a 3 8 wrench or socket. You can definitely use a socket for the front ones here. You have a lot of space. However, the two in the back, and if you're not gonna take the battery out, you're gonna to need to get in there uh, with a wrench. You have one here and you have one right there that are gonna to need to be removed. All four are 3 8 inch um, size. So you remove those four and that's now gonna allow us to lift uh, this engine cover off. So once you remove those four bolts that are holding on the engine cover, this is what they look like here, those 3 8 bolts. Before you're able to lift the engine cover off the engine, there's one thing kind of holding you back, and that's your breather. You have a breather valve that's attached to the cover itself, which you can leave attached. But going into that breather, you have three hoses. You have the two fuel lines, so basically the fuel line coming in and then the fuel line going out to the carburetor. And you're also gonna have this breather tube that goes from the crankcase and comes into the breather valve itself. So the fuel lines, you don't have to disconnect. There's enough slack in those that's gonna allow you to move the engine cover up and out of the way. But you will need to remove this breather hose right here. You can either do it from the engine side, which is on the other side of the engine, but it's much easier over here and you could disconnect it right here. So the way that's done is you get yourself a pair of pliers. I like using a pair of linesman pliers because they got a nice wide mouth on them. And you're gonna basically grab this clip. So this is not the one we're gonna be removing, but it's in a good position to show you guys. You have a little tab here and two up here. You wanna squeeze them, all those tabs together. So what you're doing is you're opening up that clip, releasing it, and then you're gonna be able to slide it down the rubber hose and off of putting pressure on the plastic nipple that comes out from the breather. So I'll see if I could do it on camera for you guys, one-handed. So you squeeze, I'm gonna try turning it out of the way. There we go. Squeeze and then just wiggle it down. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not showing it to you. Wiggle it down. So what I did is I squeezed and I wiggled it down the line. So it's no longer constricting the rubber line on that nipple and then we could pull it off if the rubber is a little tight on the nipple take your same pliers give it a little twist don't be too hard on it because you want to break that rubber that plastic nipple and then with the pliers slide it off as such and then you have your nipple there and i have yeah which is like that so now with that removed it's giving us the freedom to lift this engine cover up. So you gotta be careful, you gotta get up and over the uh, oil dipstick. And that gives us now the room to access the cylinder head. So you see, I didn't need to disconnect the fuel lines. They're still back there and connected to the breather. And it gives us the room we need to work up front, which is where now the majority of the work is gonna be done. So I'm gonna, I have a softball game, so I gotta leave to go play softball. Um, so when I pick up at the video, it'll be after the softball game, and we're gonna start removing the valve cover, because we gotta remove the push rods. I'm gonna show you how that's done. We need to unbolt the cylinder head, pull that off. We need to unbolt the exhaust manifold, or exhaust pipe from the cylinder head. We need to unbolt the intake manifold from the cylinder head now allow us to pull it off and of course remove our spark plug wire. So I'm going to show all that in detail with all the torque specs and 
procedure because we will have to recap, uh, recheck our clearances or reset our clearances on our valves from uh, our valves to our rockers. But I'll show you that with the John Deere specifications, or I should say the Briggs and Stratton specifications. So when I get back from the uh, softball game, we're going to pick it up there. So now it's going to be time to remove the valve cover. So first thing you want to do is remove the spark plug boot cable. Just pull on it and get it out of the way. Now to remove the valve cover itself, don't forget there's going to be some oil in here. That's going to be a drip possibility. So what you want to do is get some work uh, shop towel or paper towel underneath there to catch that so it doesn't drip all over your floor. To unbolt it, it's a 3 8 socket. And what I always like to do whenever I'm unbolting mating surfaces, especially where there's a gasket involved, is cross pattern. So I like to give a little bit of a quarter turn to loosen it at one corner, this opposing corner, work up in an X pattern to bring it off nicely. It's not a high torque situation, so I don't think this would warp if we weren't to go in that rotation, but it's a habit I like to always maintain, so I always keep that same routine. And that way, when it does come to a part that matters doing it that way, I'm not gonna forget uh, to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these four bolts. So once again, it's a three eight socket, and you're gonna remove the four of those. And we're gonna then pry the, um, valve cover gasket valve cover off of the cylinder head it's a um there's no gasket here i think john deere looks like they use some kind of silicone so we're gonna have to go get um or if you if you already have like i do a high heat silicone um gasket maker when we reassemble everything uh, so let me go ahead and unbolt that right now so what you're going to want to do is find an area where you could get a screwdriver or a metal scraper in. You want to be very delicate because you don't want to gouge those mating surfaces. Yes, ideally a plastic uh, scraper, but the silicone and sealant they use is very highly adhesive and I was having a hard time. So be very careful with the flat blade screwdriver, get it started, and then gently you could pry the um, valve cover away and work your way down until you get it loose and pull it off. Um, I'm not gonna film it as I do it because it's gonna be a little too difficult, but I just wanted to show you the technique I'm using, and then we'll return once the valve cover itself is off. You can see the valve train. Um, so yeah, it made a bit more of a mess than I thought. So there is quite a bit of oil that's retained in that valve cover. Uh, so definitely have a lot of rags ready. I was prepared, but unfortunately I did get some on my floor. So the next step is, we're gonna to want to remove the push rods. So to do that, we gotta um, slacken up the rockers, okay? Now I know some of you might get scared at this step. Don't worry, in the video, I'm gonna talk you through how to put everything back and the proper clearances to gap for. Um, so what we're gonna need in order to loosen the locker is, uh, the rocker, we need two tools. We need a T20 Torx that's gonna fit in here because basically what would happen is if you took your wrench and tried to loosen this, this bolt here, this nut, the whole assembly would turn, right? So what you need to do is stop the whole assembly and just that locking nut, the retaining nut needs to be loosened. So with your T20 holding that uh, in the middle, then you could take your wrench, 5 8 slide it on, and we could then slacken um, everything up. And that will then allow us to slacken it up enough where we're not going to remove the rocker completely and we're not going to remove that nut completely. We're going to slacken it enough that we could turn it sideways and get it off of the push rod that's here. See the push rods being retained or held in place by the rocker. So we need to slacken this off enough to give us the gap or the space we need to pull it away, turn it sideways so it's off of the push rod and we could slide the push rod out. So that's what I'm going to do. So once again, our T20 Torx into the middle here. It's gonna fit in. You're gonna hold it tight. You're gonna take your wrench on this nut right here, counterclockwise. Slacken it enough, about a couple of turns, two or three turns, is gonna give you enough slack. What you're gonna do, if I get the phone camera in the right place, because what's gonna happen is the push rod wants to come with it. So hold the push rod back, and you're gonna be able to turn the rocker away. And that's going to be able to allow you to slide the push rod out. And you see it has a marker on it, red, right? 
So if I'm correct, the upper is intake. So red is intake. I'll double check that information and get back to you for sure. But keep track of it. You know, so when you take it out, put it aside that you know it's the top one. And then when you take it out, you'll have the bottom one. But we'll definitely have this video. Myself, I'll have it for reference and you guys will have it for reference. So red colored is coming from the top. And I think it's blue, but we'll double check when I take it out. It's coming from the bottom. So we're going to put that aside on our magnetic tray. Remember, magnetic trays are friends, so we don't lose anything. And you go ahead and, if you want, put that rocker, you know, out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead and do it with the bottom one as well. Same procedure. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I did the same procedure for the bottom one. And there's the push rod. We're going to pull it out and see what color we have. And we have no color. Okay, so no color strip on the bottom. And the red one um, is on top. So there we go. Now, what we're going to have to do is removal of the exhaust pipe. Intake plenum. Uh, we could go ahead and remove our spark plug as well, get it out of the way. Now, I one thing I didn't talk about, because I already had some slack on my rockers to start undoing it. But if the, if the lockers were tight and you were having issues with this, this nut, you could manually, by your hand, turn the engine to change the compression stroke where the, the cylinder is and then where the valves are to close them to give you more slack. Uh, in my case, I didn't need to do that. Um, so that's what we're going to go and do. Um, and then we're going to be able to start removing our cylinder head bolts. And I'm going to talk about that procedure. So let me go ahead now and start working on the exhaust pipe. And I'm going to come back and show you what sizes we need. I believe it's an Allen, a hex. Yep. Yeah. And the intake, which is just probably in our three eighths, but I'll confirm for you guys. So let's go ahead and do that now. Guys, yeah, so we're going to take our hex, our Allen, and we're going to slacken up our two um, bolts for our exhaust pipe. They're not on there very tight. I didn't really need to give them much um, to get them out. You know, being doing a lot of auto mechanics and working on exhaust, um, I'm so used to things being <laughs> on exhaust to be so hard. Uh, this was quite nice actually uh, that it came out so easy. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and remove those two completely to give us that slack for the exhaust. So once those two pipes uh, bolts are removed from the exhaust pipe, you just pull it off and you can see it comes nice and loose. There is a gasket there, so you can order a new gasket when you order a new head gasket. Um, or you can, if the gasket's in good shape, I don't know. Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. I mean, it is a lawnmower. They have a little bit of exhaust. I don't think it's the end of the world, but I'll probably be looking for a new gasket or if you could buy a gasket paper, um, a high heat gasket paper, make your own gasket. It's up to you guys. So now let's look at removing the next portion, which is our intake um, plenum. So while I have you here, let's confirm if 3 8 is the size, and it is. So we take our 3 8 socket, and we're going to remove these two bolts here. And that will be the same thing. It's going to allow us to pull away this exhaust plenum from the cylinder block. We'll have to see if by any chance um, the carburetor's holding us back from uh, being able to really get the room we need. I don't think it will be. I think, um, I don't wanna start playing with um, the, uh, the rods on, uh, sorry, wow, sorry about that guys the rods for the choke and the throttle. So hopefully if it's by taking that off, um, it'll give us enough. So what we want to be careful of obviously is that the, the engine cover when we unbolt this isn't putting any strain on uh, the carburetor rods there. So me, I'll put the phone down and do that and I'll explain to you when I get back. So I was able to remove those bolts and I didn't have to remove any of those rods, the uh, choke or the throttle. I was able to get the clearance I needed. Just be careful, you're not putting any strain on it at all. Uh, there's not much strain in this case, but I'll leave that to your guys' discretion. So now the next step is removal of the cylinder head bolts. So you're gonna see them um, scattered out here. So you got one, two, three. We got one here, four, five. 
Uh, do we have any more? Yeah, we have some. Ooh, can you guys see it at the bottom there? I can see a couple. Um, so we'll have to get those out. I'm going to confirm the size. Um, they do not look to be 3 8 in this case. Oh, they actually are. So everything is 3 8 in this engine. Uh, so it's a 3 8 Now, when removing the cylinder head bolts, same thing, cross pattern. Um, actually, let's refer to the Briggs & Stratton um, procedure in the manual. And what I'll do is, as this video clip ends, I'll put a picture image up of the removal procedure. I mean, if it's like a car, normally you go in a cross pattern, quarter turn, slacken it, and then continue around. Uh, but in some, you know, they want you going top to bottom, working your way through. So I'll have to see in the Briggs and Stratton manual, and I'll show you guys that. So when the video comes back, it'll be a still image of the procedure, or if I can't find it, I'll explain it to you. Either way. So I couldn't find a diagram, but I did find some information on the Briggs and Stratton forums. Uh, it was contradictory. Some people are saying it doesn't matter what you do because it's a low torque application, which I can understand. But once again, I'm going to hold true to the way I majority of the time see it when working on auto mechanics is working from one corner to cross corner, going up, cross, up, cross. You know, what I mean, going in that crisscross pattern to evenly um, detorque the surfaces. Um, and, you know, give a quarter turn on each one first to slightly loosen it and then work your way around. Um, so if you guys want to do the research on your end to see if there's a really the official way, but I think this way is perfect enough. So I'm going to go ahead and unbolt these and remove the cylinder head and we'll see what we have. Okay, guys, so we have the cylinder head removed. So I haven't done anything to it yet other than remove it. And sitting beside it is the uh, valve cover. Um, so what the next step would be is, you know, clean all these mating surfaces, taking a razor blade, getting all that old gasket material off. Same thing for the valve cover. For the factory, they use a silicone. So you got to scrape that all off to prep for new silicone. And if we come over here and we look on the machine itself, you could see the old gasket. Now, the question is, do we see a failure? And unfortunately, I don't see an evident failure, meaning I don't see one that points out right away saying, oh, there it is, right? However, what I was hoping to see, or I'm thinking is the failure somewhere in here. So this is your um, valve train galley, where the valve train sits. And I was hoping that the oil burning was because this gasket portion here failed, allowing oil to seep through into the combustion chamber. Now, while I don't see anything overly evident, like I don't see a crack in the gasket, when I took the cylinder head off, this portion was very wet in oil, whereas the rest of the gasket was not. I'm not saying that's, you know, saying yes, that's that's where oil is seeping through, but it's, you know, at least it's something. When we come look at the head itself, so we can see here the valve galley, and then we valve train galley, so that's where the oil feeds up into the rockers and the push rods. And here, same thing. This area here was very, very wet and muddy as compared to the other areas. It wasn't not so much. So, that being said, I'm hoping um, that's what's happening is you're all seeping in. So, I mean, really the only way to know is I'm going to slap a new head gasket on and that's going to find out. I mean, yeah, I could do a compression test, leak down test, um, you know, but... I'm very confident in the symptoms and what I'm seeing that it is a head gasket. So yes, am I throwing money at the problem, throwing parts at the problem? I guess you could say so. But honestly, for um, the cost, it's uh, $20 Canadian for the gasket. It's worth a try. Now, when you're ordering the gasket, I got mine on Amazon. Um, two day, I'm an Amazon Prime member, so two-day shipping. Um, you're going to want to order the right gasket. I think, you know, that style of gasket is pretty much used on, I think, for the past 20 years from what I've read online. But if you want to make sure you're ordering for your right machine and you want to know what the exact model of the engine you have, the Briggs and Striden, uh, if you look on the valve cover, you have numbers here. So I have the model number of my engine is the 31G777. It's a type 0205B1 and the code is the serial code. Um, so when you type in 31G777, that gives you um, really a breakdown of all the parts. If you want to go specific, you can put the type number in as well. 
uh, but the gasket number that I got seems to be the most common one. Um, so I order on Amazon. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go take a razor blade. I'm gonna go clean up all these surfaces. You wanna be careful not to gouge anything. So you wanna clean all in here, get it all nice and clean, get all that gook off. And same thing, like I said, over here on the um, on the the engine, the crankcase itself. Take peel off the old gasket, and then clean that surface as well. Uh, make sure there's no debris that gets in the cylinder bore. If there is, wipe it out. Air compressed air, blow it out. Um, we can see my cylinder hat. The top of the cylinder has a lot of mess on it. Um, you know, granted, it is five years old and it's um, seen a lot of action, so I'm not expecting to see a brand new looking uh, piston hat, but uh, I think some of that burning oil did some of that, I'm, I'm thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I got to wait a couple of days for that new gasket to come in, and then we'll pick up the video and we'll see how the installation goes. Hey guys, so we're fast forwarding two days while I was waiting for the new. Uh, head gasket to come in from Amazon. So I did receive it. Um, we can see the the part number right here is 796584. That's the particular part number for my engine, which is the 31G77 0205B1. Make sure you guys go on Briggs Stratton's website um, to order the right uh, gasket for your mower. You put in those numbers and it'll give you the exact part number you need. You can then go to Amazon or your store of choice. When you receive the new gasket, always check it with the old one to make sure it's the exact same size. Mine is. So what have I done since um, last part of the video? I went ahead and cleaned the cylinder head. So you can see I cleaned up the gasket material for the rocker cover, valve cover. And as well, I cleaned up inside the head. Oh, as much of the carbon off as I could, cleaned up the valves, the mating surface, got it all nice and clean and smooth. And as well on the engine side, I cleaned up the mating surface. I put some paper towels to keep any, as I'm cleaning, to keep any stuff out of there. And I cleaned up the, um, the piston as well. Remember it was all that carbon, so I cleaned that up. So we're pretty much ready to slap our new gasket on and install our head. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Okay, so here we're set up and we're going to be putting the head gasket on. It can pretty much go only one way. Um, you have these locating pins on the block that orient the gasket itself. So you slide that on and the pins will hold it in place. And then what the next step will be, we'll be sliding the cylinder head into place. So you're gonna take your cylinder head, you're gonna make sure you have it oriented the right way. So we know it goes this way in this particular case. And we're gonna be putting the cylinder head on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna get back and I'm gonna show you the tightening sequence and what steps are important to take. Okay, so what we've done now is we've got the head gasket in place, the head slid on. We hand tightened, so very lightly, all our bolts. So we have no torque really applied to it, it's just to hold the head evenly in place. We're now gonna torque these bolts. So you need your torque wrench. Now here's the specs from Briggs and Stratton. First torque, so you're gonna do this in two steps. First torque, 150 inch pounds. If you want to know what inch pounds are in foot pounds, divide by 12. So 150 inch pounds will be our first torque setting and then 220 inch pounds on the second pass. So we're going to do it in two steps. As far as the pattern you're going to want to follow, you want to do your typical cross pattern. So top corner, bottom corner, top corner, bottom corner, top middle, bottom middle, kind of work your way around. As long as you're distributing the torque evenly throughout the face, you're not causing any warpage. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and torque those bolts with our torque wrench. So our head bolts are all in and torqued to the 220 inch pounds. So we know that is done. The next step now is to reinsert the push rods. 
So here's our first push rod. If you remember earlier in the video, the one with the red marker, which is our exhaust, is going to be going on top. So we're going to slide it into the guide right here. And at the back, what it needs to fit into is, let's see if I can put the light on for you. If you look in the back, I'll do my best. Oh, I don't know how well you guys are going to see this, but in the back, there's like a little hole. You kind of see that dark circular in the back. It's like a little cup that the end of the push rod has to fit into. So when you're doing it, it'll, it'll be more obvious to you. So you need to insert your push rods and make sure it fits into that. Now, once you have it in place, you then need to take your rockers, swing them into position. So you can see on the rocker, you have a little ball here that goes on the push rod. The longer tail end goes on your, on your valves. Also make sure that these little caps are on, right? That we didn't lose them. Make sure you have those both on. There's two of them, one on each. We put the rockers in place. We then hand, hand tighten the retaining bolt. And then what we're going to do is be taking our feeler gauges and we're going to be setting the valve clearance. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So what we need to do now is we need to find top dead center of the engine on the compression stroke. So what's the compression stroke? It's when both the valves are completely closed and our piston is at the top dead center of that stroke. We know we're at TDC or top dead center of the compression stroke. Now Briggs and Stratton, what they want us to do is they want us to bring it to TDC, top dead center on the compression stroke, and then continue turning till the piston comes back a quarter of an inch. So the way we could do that is you could take yourself a long screwdriver and you could stick it into the uh, spark plug hole because we our spark plug is out and we could use that as a gauge. So you'll see it as you're turning the engine. Once again, Briggs and Stratton wants us to turn the engine counterclockwise. The screwdriver will either start going inwards and then eventually it'll start coming out. And you want to keep turning till it, it stops coming out and might want to start going back in again. That means you've already come past top dead center. So I'll let you, you know, you guys be the judge of it. You keep turning, you'll feel it kind of pause and it won't come out anymore. It'll, when next, on the next turn, it'll actually go inwards. So when that happens, before it goes inwards again, we know we're at top dead center. And then we want to continue turning to our screwdriver goes back in a quarter of an inch. So you can mark that with some tape um, on your screwdriver. And once that happens, then what we need to do is we need to adjust our valve clearance on our rockers between our valve. So the settings on that are uh, um, intake valve is four thousandths of an inch. Exhaust valve is six thousandths of an inch. And you do that with a feeler gauge. So you get yourself a feeler gauge and you'll see all the numbers on it. And you find the numbers you need. And you're going to check it by sliding that feeler gauge in between the valve tap it, the top of the valve and the rocker. And what, if that, all you want to do is for it to slide in easily, slight, pretty much no resistance, but it just fits nicely and snug in there with free movement. You know you've got the right spacing. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten our rocker adjustment, ro locker rock, lock, sorry, rocker lock. And just like before, what we're going to do is we take our uh, Torx bit, we put it in there. We turn this to lock and then we turn the set screw to lock it all in place and holding this with a wrench so it doesn't turn when we turn that set screw and that'll set the clearance. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now and then I'll come back. So with your valves all adjusted, your valve clearance, the next step is going to be to reinstall the exhaust and the intake. I don't have the torque spec for them. They're probably going to be very low. So you just want to get them nice and hand snug. Uh, don't overdo it. You don't want to um, strip any threads. Let's get them nice and thug, uh, snug. So we're going to do our exhaust. We're going to do our intake. Tighten those up. And then we're going to go and I'll show you the step to take for resealing the rocker slash valve cover. Okay, so our exhaust and our intake are bolted back up. The next step is to put the rocker slash valve cover back on. So it goes this way. Our numbers are on top so we can read them. Now, depending on the serial number, 
Yours might have a rubber gasket or it might be a silicone gasket. Mine was a silicone gasket. According to Briggs and Stratton, if yours had a silicone gasket from the factory, uh, um, uh, a silicone made gasket, then you have to reapply silicone. If it had the rubber gasket, you could reuse the old rubber gasket if it's still in good shape, if not buy a new one. So mine had the silicone, so I'm gonna be reapplying some gasket maker and I'm gonna be using uh, the Permatex Power Sport gasket maker, the silver one. Why silver? Well, the engine's silver, just so it's not too noticeable. And also, you want to make sure it has the heat range that's needed. This one's good from minus 50 Celsius all the way up to 500 Fahrenheit, so more than, more than good enough for this application. So when you apply it, you're going to apply it to the flange of the valve cover. Make sure it's nice and clean. The mating surfaces are nice and clean. And you're going to apply a small bead of that silicone onto the flange. Go around the holes, get a good seal. You're going to give it a, about a minute to set up with this particular silicone anyways. And then you're going to put it into place and you're going to evenly bolt it on. So that same pattern, cross pattern, top right, bottom left, top left, bottom right. Uh, torque spec, hand tight basically. Uh, you just want to snug it up. Don't overdo it as you might strip out the holes. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once the valve covers back on, the only thing remaining is to put the spark plug back in. Give it about 24 hours for your silicone that you apply to properly dry before trying to start the mower. I know you guys are going to be like me and you want to start it right away and see if it works. Give it time. Be patient. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay guys, so another day has passed, so I reassembled the engine. I didn't show putting everything back together, like the, you know, showing me put on the valve cover and the hood. You know, I think that's pretty uh, straightforward. This is reversal of what you saw me do when I took it off. Um, so pretty much problem solved. I uh, let that the silicone gasket maker on the valve cover dry overnight. I started it up, I did a, a grass cut no more white smoke, no more oil smell, seems to be really holding up. So I'm very happy that the repair worked, um, you know, and unfortunately, when we look at these machines, these Briggs and Stratton's, um, it might be something that we have to do every so often. Um, it's a design flaw in the gasket. I'm gonna show you how, why. So if we look at the gasket, we knew in theory, the oil was coming from our pushrod galley and seeping over into our combustion chambers. Basically the combustion gases were drawing in and sucking the oil through. And that's why we were burning, right? You can even see, I think that's exactly where the failure point was, right in that spot. And why does that happen? Well, let's see, we have all these bolt holes here holding this gasket nice and tight against the block, in between the block and the head. And we got, look at the spacing between bolts over here. We got nothing really putting a lot of pressure in here holding that nice and tight so it's definitely going to always possibly be a failure point so unfortunately it might be something that needs to be done every well in my case it was after five years but only after 80 hours so for some of you guys that's 80 hours is a season so just saying to keep in mind so anyways guys thank you very much for watching the video if you have any questions or comments definitely please leave them down below um, i hope i was able to answer most of your questions for you guys um, that have to do this kind of project. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it and we'll see you soon.